What is up guys, Max here. Welcome back to another quick and easy After Effects tutorial. Now in today's tutorial, we're gonna create this subscribe button you see here on screen. Super simple and easy to make and everybody uses them in their videos. Now as always, right before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the content. You can also jump down to the description to check out the Twitter, Instagram, and Discord channel. And if you like this song you're currently listening to, you can sign up for a 30 day free trial to Epidemic Sound. So you can also have cool music for your videos too. Let's get started. So in today's tutorial, we're using After Effects. As always for After Effects, let's right click in the project panel. If you don't see the project panel, just hit projects. Where's it at? Blah, 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 project right there. Right click, new composition. Now we want this composition to be 1920 by 1080 for our HD videos. If you're doing 4K or something, let's do 3840 by 2160. But today we're gonna stick to 1920 by 1080. From here, you can call this main, main project. And let's change the frame rate to 60 frames per second, just to cover our animation basis. And we want this animation to be 10 seconds long, so change this to 10 seconds. Click OK. Next, we need a shape. So let's go ahead and grab our shape tool at the top here. Um, rectangle tool is fine. Uh, fill, red, stroke. Uh, let's turn the stroke off. Click OK. And then drag out a shape, about like this. Now, we want the uh, anchor point to be in the center of this, so let's uh, grab our anchor point tool right here, pan behind, grab the anchor point, uh, then hit control on the keyboard and it'll de kind of ding it to the center. Cool. Now this is in the center, let's actually center it up on the screen, go to window and align, and align it to the center. Next we want to actually type out subscribe. So let's type out subscribe, grab the text tool, uh, subscribe. Uh, change the font to whatever font you choose. Highlight it all. Let's change it to Borea Black. Seems pretty appropriate. Uh, and then let's put it. Let's put it right here. Grab the edge. Hold Shift and scale it up. Just like so. Now what we want to do is actually highlight the shape and subscribe. Go to Align and then center them both up. So they're just like that. Now what we can do is take subscribe, highlight the layer grab the parent and link tool and link it to shape one. Now, if you don't see parent and link, no big deal. Right click in this gray bar right here, go to columns and then parent and link. Turn this on or off to show it. Now what we need is a mouse to fly in and click on this to turn it to subscribe. And then click this button right here to turn off our background. And to create the mouse shape, what I'm gonna do is actually bring in a reference. So the reason we're bringing in references, I do want to make my own. I don't want to actually have to, you know, uh, download a PNG or something to have a hosted file in this project. I just want my own version. So let's grab our uh, uh, pen tool and actually go ahead and draw this mouse out real quick. And that looks pretty appropriate. Let's turn off the uh, reference image. Uh, take the stroke of this object and make it a lot larger because it does look bigger in the picture. And now we have our shape that looks pretty appropriate. That looks like a pretty good mouse clicker. Now we can delete our reference. Okay, so grab shape layer three. Uh, the anchor point is over here. Let's grab the pan behind tool, grab the anchor point, and move it to about right here. So when we actually click, it's going to look a little different. Now hit shape layer three, which is our mouse. Hit S on your keyboard and scale comes up. And let's scale it down to like an appropriate mouse clicker size. Great. Now let's uh, move it by hitting V on our keyboard to so do the select tool and then moving it to here where it will click. Now a little bit down our timeline, about a second and a half in, we want it to click. So hit P on our keyboard to open up position, keyframe the position by hitting the stopwatch, going back to zero in our timeline and actually moving it off screen. So it will scroll in. I want it to go a little faster than that, so one second is fine. It clicks. Uh, let's keyframe it one more time by clicking this little diamond right here. It clicks, and then it scrolls off. Now, we want these keyframes to be somewhat dynamic, so let's highlight all these keyframes, right-click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. This will actually kind of give it a little bit of motion, just like that. And when it goes in, it stops. We want it to click. So hit S on our keyboard with the shape layer three selected. Uh, keyframe the scale by clicking this. 
hit U on our keyboard to show all keyframes. And from here, it's gonna click. So it stops, it gets smaller, it gets bigger again. Copy this keyframe, Control C or Command C, um, Control V or Command V to paste this keyframe. And it should do like a click motion now. Let's fit to screen, scrolls on, click, scrolls off, perfect. Now when it clicks, we want the subscribe to change to subscribed and uh, change the color of the button. So we'll click subscribe, hit Control D or uh, hit Control D on our keyboard to duplicate it, uh, double click it to highlight it, and then hit D on our keyboard, subscribed, right? Um, next, what we're gonna do is actually grab the rectangle tool with subscribe selected, and we're gonna draw a mask around this right here. The mask will appear down here, and let's do inverted. So now, subscribed has become a thing. Next, what we'll do is take subscribed and parent it to subscribe. Now, when this clicks, we want the D to appear. So hit T, in our, hit T on our keyboard, keyframe the opacity at 100%, move it down, and then scroll down opacity to 0%. So when it clicks, subscribed appears. Now, we also want it to slightly move over to be centered. So hit P on our keyboard for subscribe, the original. Keyframe the position. When it appears, it's going to slightly move over to stay in the center. Highlight all these keyframes. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. No problem. So this scrolls in, just like so. And we can actually kind of stretch these out a little bit to give it a little more motion, no big deal just like that. Now we need the shape to change color when this is clicked. So let's grab shape layer one, drop down on this arrow, drop down on rectangle, drop down on fill, and then drop down on color. And keyframe the color. Go down our timeline, and let's change this to a nice gray or a light gray. So when it does that, it changes just like so. So we also need the subscribe to change color to kind of match what happens on YouTube when you subscribe. The text is also a darker color. So let's grab subscribe right here. Uh, let's close down shape one too. Grab subscribe, go to our effects and presets, window effects and presets, and let's just type in fill. Make sure subscribe is clicked, grab fill, drop it onto subscribe. It's gonna change it to red, that's okay. Let's change this to white and then drop down on subscribe, drop down on effects, fill, and then keyframe the color. Let's actually move this up so we can see all of our keyframes. We wanna line it up with shape layer one to be the exact timing. Go back in time right here. Keyframe of the fill is this. Goes down in time and it needs to be a darker color at this point. So let's change the color to a darker color. just like so. We can also change the color of uh, the, the button to be a little lighter too. No big deal. Now what we can do is actually take this fill, Control C or Command C, take subscribed, which is our D, move it back in, time, in the timeline to make sure it's uh, the same keyframe point, and just uh, paste it on here with uh, Command V or Control V. So this should also change the color, just like that. Now let's close all these layers down, clicked and subscribed. Now what we wanna do is actually have this move on screen. So like it kind of scrolls up and then scrolls down or something. Super, super simple to pull this off. So what we're gonna do is highlight everything, right click and do pre-compose and do final uh, comp or something. Doesn't really matter what it's called and hit enter. Next up, we're gonna actually uh, hit P on our keyboard for the position, keyframe it, about right there. It's gonna come from the bottom. It's gonna go up, stay on screen, that's off, and then go away by going up. Just like that, highlight everything, highlight everything, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. So it's like this, subscribed, and gone. Now this can stay on screen a little longer, I think. 
and uh, we want this to actually happen at a different time inside the composition. So we want like the actual mouse to start about right here. So this stays on screen for a few seconds. So let's keep our cursor right here, double click this and just grab all these layers, move it down in our timeline to right about here where everything starts and grab these layers and move them back. So now this actually will start later in the timeline and everything will be lined up, no problem. Go back to main project. Now if we hit play, it does that, goes on, off, and off. Now let's make these keyframes a little more dynamic. So let's highlight everything and you'll see this little button right here called the graph editor. Click this and we can actually, it looks a little weird. Let's change this real quick. Let's go to speed graph by clicking this button and then edit speed graph. It looks just like this. Now grab each one of these keyframe points and hold shift, move it over, hold shift, move this one over, grab this, hold shift, move it over, hold shift, grab this point and move it over. Now our keyframes are gonna look a little more dynamic. So it's gonna go whoop, like that. And then whoop, off. This one may be a little too dynamic, so let's move it back a little bit. Let's make it a little less dynamic, kind of the same point as this one, just like so. And we can do the same thing with the mouse as well. So double click Final Comp, find our shape layer three, which was the mouse. Click U on our keyboard to find all the keyframes. Here's the movement keyframes. Grab the graph editor right here. Should be set to not speed graph. Oh my goodness, change it back to speed graph. And then do the same thing. Make these keyframes a little dynamic. Now there are really interesting keyframe dynamic tools out there that kind of automate this process. But for tutorial purposes, I always like to show the graph editor because it is a very important tool inside of After Effects. And uh, this should be doing the same thing. Scrolls on, scrolls off, just like that. Now go back to main project, turn the graph editor off, and we have this right here. So goes up, subscribe, subscribed, goes off. And then let's scroll the 10 down here where it's gone. So it's only about a five second animation. Go to composition, uh, trim comp to work area. And the last step is to add a motion blur to this to make it look really awesome. So let's turn the background back on, just like that. Let's right click in the open layer panel, go to new adjustment layer. Go to effects and presets, type in CC force motion blur, drag this onto here. And as you can see, when it goes on, it's gonna have motion blur now. If we turn the effects off right here, you can see where it doesn't work, where it's on. Uh, with it on, it looks pretty great, looks appropriate. It's rendering a little slower now because we're actually using motion blur, a little more processing involved. But once it renders, it looks pretty great. Now we want to render this. So let's go to composition and then add to render queue. Now we wanna render this without a background so we actually put it on videos inside of Premiere. Uh, let's grab the output module, change, click on lossless. Opens up a bunch of different options. Uh, on format, drop down, let's do QuickTime. Channels, RBG plus alpha, and then click okay. That will render this without a background. Uh, let's go to output, main project. Let's find our project. Here we go, click save, and then render. Great, now this is rendered, we can try this out. So let's go back to project by clicking this little arrow, project, here's our stuff. Let's drag in the file we just created. And if I drag it onto our thing we just created, you'll see, and I, let's, let's, I don't know, like scale it down. Here it is. It's there, it's just a, now an asset we can use in all of our videos by just laying it on top, there's no background. It works great. And that is how you create a really simple subscribe button inside of After Effects. I know everybody uses them on all their videos, so I think this was a pretty good asset to create. As always guys, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you are new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. Other than that, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.